welcome to the regularly scheduled meeting of the Oklahoma City Planning Commission for September 14, 2017. We're, we're a little shy today, but we have enough to conduct business, so we're going to proceed. And any of you who have your cell phones with you, if you'd shut them off, please, or put them on airplane mode or whatever you have to do to keep them from going off, I would appreciate that. Um, the way this works is we'll go through the docket. There's some housekeeping things we'll do at the beginning that'll narrow it down a little bit for us. But as we go through the cases, we'll call each one. The applicant will come forward, give a name and address, and tell us what it is that they're asking for. Um, Commissioners may have questions of them. If there's anybody else here who wants to be heard on the matter, we'll ask them to come forward. Same drill. Um, and then commissioners will discuss and vote on each item in turn. Um, we'll start with the receipt of the minutes from the August 24th Planning Commission meeting. Did you receive the minutes? Second. I have a motion and a second to receive the minutes of the August 24th meeting. Would you cast your votes, please? And they are received. Um, next, we have continuance requests. Um, there are uncontested requests. Four uncontested continuances. Item 20, C6920, defer to October 12th. Item 21, PUD 1649, defer to September 28th. Item 22, C6880, defer to September 28th. And item 23, CE 956 to September 28th. Is there anybody here today that thought they were coming to speak on one of those items? Do I have a motion to continue items 20 through 23? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second to continue items 20 through 23. Would you cast your votes, please? And they are continued. We have one new request. That's item 19, PUD 1651. Defer that item to October 12th. Is there anybody here today that thought they were going to speak on that item? Do I have a motion to continue item number 19? Move to continue 19. Second. I have a motion and a second to continue item number 19. Would you cast your votes, please? It is continued. Next, we have public hearing. We have a consent docket, items that do not require discussion. Okay, hey, the consent docket, the first eight items. Item one, PC 10508 to rezone 1110 council. Item two, C6924, final plat of places at Fountain Lake. Item three, 6927, final plat of Campbell Industrial Park. Item four, 6928, final plat Crystal Hill Estates, section two. Item 5, 6931, final plat of Magnolia Landing. Item 6, ED 220, application for a uh, street dedication. Item 7, C6926, final plat Northwood Village 2. And item 8, C6930, final plat Westgate Marketplace 4. Is there anyone present who wished to be heard on any of these items today? Yes. Would you come forward, sir? My name is Steve Ferguson. My address is 1601 Northwest Expressway, Suite 1515. Which item is it? Item number five. Item number five. We're about to approve it, unless you have some reason we shouldn't. I represent the owner of the property immediately north adjacent to the subject property. We have a boundary dispute between the north-south line. It's yet unresolved. It's pending in district court. And? We object to the confirmation of a final plat on the basis that we don't want our property platted. No. We don't attempt to resolve boundary disputes. I understand. Just want I think our objection. it's just beyond no. our purview. So I think we're going to go ahead, if that's all right with you. Well, yes, we'll note your objection. 
Thank you. Thank you. Someone else had their hand up. No? I was pretty sure someone else had their hand up. Three. Item three. Item three. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, afternoon, I'm sorry. Uh, my name is Dwight Farmer, and I'm here representing the Wildwood Heights neighborhood, and also here to ask the commission to reject the proposed uh, Campbell Industrial Park in our neighborhood. Okay, then what we'll do is pull that off the consent agenda and discuss it in turn. If you'll give us just a minute to dispose of the other items, we'll come right back to you. Okay, thank you. So with the exception of item number three, do I have a motion to approve the consent docket? Items one, two, four, through eight. I move consent docket. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the consent docket with the exception of item number three. Would you cast your votes, please? And they are approved. We'll go through the um, items requiring separate votes. You'll be first. First item of public hearing will be item number three, C6927, final plan of Campbell Industrial Park, located south of Northeast 70th Street and east of Santa Fe Avenue. The applicant present. Good morning. <coughs> Before we go any further, can I ask you, have you had a chance to meet with the neighbors? No, ma'am. Uh, not on this site. We were not unaware of anybody until we got here today. So should you take some time and go do that before we go any further? I think I can explain, further? and I think there may be some confusion. Okay. Uh, so this... You can see the blue line on there is, is a fairly well-defined large creek. The property uh, to the north of the creek uh, was zoned many years ago as I-1, uh, and it's been under development uh, very slowly for the last three or four years. Um, there was uh, lot splits that occurred on these tracks. Uh, the original concept was that the owner was going to develop it and lease buildings, so we didn't do a plat initially. And then he had two buyers, so we did two lot splits. And then he said, I think I'm going to sell all this. So we submitted this plat as a housekeeping matter to allow the lots to be split. The uh, Oklahoma Street is under construction. Those plans were approved again three or four years ago. The ED was heard on the entire length of uh, Oklahoma Street at one time and approved by Planning Commission. It never went to council because the street didn't get built. We have since, with one of the lot splits, dedicated the north portion of that as an easement. Staff has that. And as part of this plat, we'll dedicate the south cul-de-sac part. I think the confusion from the neighbor may be that they've received another notice. We're representing the applicant on the piece south of the creek, which is also called Campbell Industrial Park. Uh, and it's for a rezoning, which won't be heard, I think, until our next meeting. OK. So I uh, hope that clears that up. and and. We will go away from here with this gentleman's name and, and attempt to meet with them prior to the rezoning. But this property is already zoned, and it's a minor subdivision plat. Okay. So to the commissioners, I'll note that the final plat conforms to the subdivision regulations and the approved preliminary plat. Does anybody have any questions they want to ask Mr. Johnson before we hear from? I, I do. Maybe I missed it. You said you represent south of the creek, and listen, the red is north of what it looks like a creek. Am I missing something? Uh, yes. So the red's what's before you today. Okay. It's a plat. South of the creek, we've applied to rezone from the south side of the creek to the Wildwood neighborhood north boundary. In a different application. In a different application. And so their concern might be with what's south of the I'm creek. I'm thinking they may okay. have got so, the, okay. same, the notice. Well, so, in any event, you can exchange information That's right. We're going to exchange today. information. Could you come forward for us, sir? Tell us your name and address for the record. And Dwight Farmer. And my address. 6208 North Wildwood Drive. Is there any chance that Mr. Johnson is correct and that you're actually concerned about the rezoning request? Yes, and we are concerned. Uh, if the plaque is south of the creek, that's right in the back of our neighborhood. Okay. That would be the rezoning application that is not being heard today. 
That's the one on the 28th. Right. Right. And so we'd like to meet with you in your neighborhood. We'll get your information, meet with you in your neighborhood uh, to discuss it. But it won't, it's not being heard today. What, what's being heard is the what's in red, which is north of the creek. And you've probably seen the equipment up there. Yes. Moving dirt. Yes. So did you have anything you wanted to share with us about the item that we're hearing today? You talking to me? Mm hmm Well, even that that's north of the neighborhood. Right. When, when dirt is being moved, there's dust flying in the air. That comes into the neighborhood. We have children. And, and, and we, we already have 137, more than 137 businesses on Santa Fe. More than 137 on Santa Fe. And now this is another business that want to come into our neighborhood and, uh, and affect us. The, the green space will be deteriorated, which is cause, cause for concern. There will be uh, trucks coming in and out down our neighborhood all day long, sometimes during the night. And so we're concerned about that. You want to address? If I could, it, it appears in this particular track, Tim, you don't have access to the neighborhood. That's correct. In this track. So this particular track, now I'm, again, I'm not talking about south of the creek. I'm talking about north of the creek. Well, yeah. This particular track, they, they have no access. Now, I understand the issue with respect to the construction, dust, things like that. And we'll talk to our contractors about that. We, that can be addressed, but we can't do anything about that. But it, if I'm correct, we had, they have a cul-de-sac street, so they won't take any access to your neighborhood at all. Yeah, I, I was just up there two days ago, yeah. and they're moving heavy equipment, uh, moving dirt, dust flying everywhere, even if they're north. So it's still affecting our neighborhood. Yeah, we get that. Yeah. It, it, it might be a good thing if, if you would meet with them, uh, happy and set a time uh, to meet with them, uh, addressing all of their concerns, particularly as it relates to the uh, south portion of this particular uh, venue. And so on today, I'm, I know we're really addressing the northern uh, boundary. Um, and so I know that's you know kind of a separate issue, but um, we would want to see you commit to meeting and making sure that you meet with oh, the absolutely. residents. And we want to meet with them yeah. before, before uh, the zoning case. Mr. Mr. Farmer, now you live in this neighborhood to the south, is that correct? Yeah, I live across the street. Oh. Okay. Yes. Cindy, you have an area. Okay. Is there an area? There, there, there's two neighborhoods: there's Wildwood Hills and Wildwood Heights Neighborhood Association. Well, we appreciate you coming down. If you'll get with Mr. Johnson after he does his presentation here, give him your contact information and get his. I'm sure he'll arrange to meet with you, answer whatever questions and as concerns as he best he can with respect to the upcoming application and also with respect to your concerns about the construction impact on this site. Yeah. I mean, we'll, be, we'll agree to do that before we come before you again. I appreciate that. Um, commissioners, anything else? We're going to take action on this today. We are. I'll move approval. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve item number three. Would you cast your votes, please? It is approved. Next item is number nine, ABC 901, application for an ABC 2 overlay at 2836 Northwest 68th Street. Hello. I'm the applicant. I'm uh, Keith Miller, the Chief Financial Officer for Ted's Cafe Escondido Restaurants. And we're applying for an um, alcohol beverage consumption license at our location there at, um, on Northwest 68th. Uh, we spoke by phone. Yes. And um, this is in my ward. It, Ted's is a very small site, and my concern was about the idea of them finding space for a bar. Mm -hmm. I understand it's really just going to be. No, it, yeah, it's going to be just a little service bar. Really, you know, what our guests, we've been there for 25 years, and what our guests have been requesting over and over is just a margarita with their dinner. And so our plan is to make a small service bar, which is closed off, obviously, to 
you know, to anyone that, to get to it and put a margarita machine, a couple margarita machines, and that's really it in there. Uh, no, no addition to the building, nothing like that. And this is, this is a use that's been there a long time. Oh, yeah. The neighbors kind of know what it is. People are moving in and out of the area, kind of know what they're getting. So um, I would take a motion. Uh, is there anybody else who wants to be heard on this item? Sorry. No. I'll move Commissioners? Approval. Move approval. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve item number nine. Do you cast your votes, please? It is approved. Thank you. Item 10, ABC 902, application for an ABC 2 overlay at 2563 West Memorial Road. Uh, Brandon Coon with Hewitt Zollers, 2832 West Wilshire, um, representing the applicant. I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions. This is for ABC uh, license to go with the Lifetime Fitness facility that's under construction by Quell Springs Mall. Um, uh -oh. I have a question. <laughs> 236,000 square feet for the overlay, but it's really about two restaurant sites, right? Yeah, it's about two restaurants. There's a, there's a restaurant that kind of goes out to the pool that shares a kitchen with an indoor restaurant, but they would like it to cover the site if they had like a tennis tournament or a special event or something like that, that they could host, you know, parties kind of in different parts of, of the facility. This the golf was, course case. This was, yeah, we had, <laughs> we had this. It's the same thing. Yeah. When you were not with us last time, we heard um, a case for a nail salon. It's like 100 square feet. So even though they were seeking an ABC3, you know, it was only 100 square feet. So um, I think, as we discussed at that time, there's going to be a lot more of these kind of hybrid um, alcohol service requests. 236,000 square feet is a lot of square feet. Um, and frankly, I guess I would like a little bit of input from um, staff about whether, if it's an ABC2 and therefore the service of alcohol is tied to the food, it, does that present any difficulty at all with, you know, 236,000 square feet of service area? Well, if they ever exceeded the food to alcohol ratio, they would be subject to come back through with another application, either an ABC3 or if the proposed ordinance moves forward, it would be a special permit. How, how would having ABC2 on two pieces of this property, if they were confined to the physical footprint of the respective restaurants, how would that affect their ability to do like special events licensing in the event they wanted to do that? Do we know? I uh, don't, they may be limited by number of special events they can do. I know they, they wouldn't be able to set up uh, remote bars, say around the pool or around the uh, tennis courts or things like that um, on their own. It would have to be a special event, but I believe special events are limited by number. So, meaning that they couldn't have 10 or 20 or whatever the number is a year. They couldn't have a, you know. Daily. A Kentucky Derby week followed by a Memorial Day holiday weekend by, you know, Cinco de Mayo or. Right. There'd be a lot of special events, I've got a feeling. I agree, 236,000 square feet sounds like a lot of space. But if you're going to have these, these sorts of uses where you're going to serve alcohol, people are going to be able to take their plastic cups out by the pool. Or I find it an interesting concept that I'm going to go work out to, to burn calories and then have a couple of beers after I'm done. But that's just, just me. Right. Um, I yeah. frankly, softball, it's the softball stadium thing. So, uh, yeah, I, I frankly, and the way I recall that we resolved that was that we narrowed it down. And I, I would really like to see a little bit more specific discussion about where the alcohol can go, where it can travel, and where it can't. So uh, I, I think I'm not ready to 
approve 236,000 square feet of alcohol service just yet without a little bit more uh, explanation and uh, effort at narrowing it down? Okay, so, so specific, say specific areas where we may serve? I think so, yeah. Alcohol, okay. You wanna take a couple of weeks and yeah, come back we'll to that. us? Yeah, that's not a problem. Do I have a motion to continue this item two weeks? Move to a continuance. Is that, is that enough? Second a motion. Yeah. Oh, that's plenty, yeah. Okay, I have a motion and a second to continue item number, are we on 10? Um, for two weeks. Okay. Cast your votes, please. You're continuing. Thank you. Item 11 is ABC 903, an application for an ABC 1 overlay at 3417 North Classen Boulevard. The applicant present. My name is Neen Zantz for a uh, price for uh, wine and beer awning for my restaurant location on 3417 North Carson Boulevard, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma State, 73118. Um, I don't know how many of you were here for the discussion about the sports bar lounge that was a little further up Class and Boulevard, where we had a fairly significant uh, protest from the adjoining residential area. Part of the, what they wanted to see was these kind of uses kept further south, which this one is, and limited in terms of, you know, alcohol uh, service, more in, in keeping with their vision of a restaurant serving alcohol as opposed to a bar serving food. And, I think that this application does that. Is there anyone present who wants to be heard on this matter today? Commissioners? Just, um, my, uh, Madam Chair, my, my concern uh, is just in, in reference to percentages of food and alcohol, you know, and I think that discussion has, has already been had, but um, with, um, with that being said, I'm So do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the application. Second. I have a motion and second to, to approve item number 11. Would you cast your votes for me, please? You are approved. Thank you. Item number 12, SN087, application to change the name of Northeast 25th Street, extending west from Bryant to Clindell Higgs Street. The applicant present. Yes. Put your microphone down for us. Give us your name All and right. address, please. Um, my name is Evangelist David Stafford. I submitted the Next name, street change. Mm -hmm. And tell us a little bit about it, if you would, please. Tell, tell us a little bit about your pastor and what he's done. Uh, what am I? Why are we doing this? Why are you asking us to do this? Why do you want us to do this? Because uh, a couple of years ago, we celebrated our 100th anniversary. And Pastor Higgs has been there 30 years on that, in that spot. And after 30 years, I just, the church decided that it would be good if we could rename that block. The church takes up one half of it, and it's Overseer Clendale Higgs Street. And he's been there 30 years, and uh, it's three houses on the other side, and I got their permission to do that. He's, the church has been nothing but an asset to them, they say. Is there anybody else in the audience who wants to be heard on this matter today? Members of the commission, you have comments, questions, concerns? Um, I know it has been uh, really a concern uh, having numbered streets uh, named uh, and not you know, kept as numbered streets. Um, in this particular instance, if you look at this uh, particular neighborhood, and I'm very familiar um, that 
it is really a closed kind of neighborhood. Probably the development will not go through on 25th Street. Uh, and so I could understand the staff's report uh, by saying that it won't be, uh, it, it won't isolate past Highland Avenue. And um, this particular pastor has served well in the community and done really some tremendous things that are admirable. Uh, and, um, and I really support this application only because and we probably will have several others uh, that may come through, but it's just one block and they have the support of all of the neighbors on that particular block. And the chances of that 25th Street going through is very unlikely uh, past uh, Highland Avenue. And so I support it. Can I, let me ask staff. In an instance like this, I, I really appreciate the fact that you went to your residential neighbors to the north um, and included them in this decision. Uh, but can you tell me, can you give me any sense of what will be required for those persons who live on this street to change their address? Well, it would be like any of us that have had to change our address before, you have to um, notify uh, your bank and any, any institutions like that. Now the city, um, we notify the, the utilities and the county that's affected for them. But any personal um, items that they have addressed at that location, they'll have to, to uh, get changed driver's license, those kind of things, as they come up. How many applications like this do, just to be fair to you guys, this is my second meeting, so. Um, <laughs> how many applications like this do we see a year? I would say that we used to see more until we um, adopted kind of our guidelines with respect to that probably four or five years ago, I think. The, Council directed us to kind of put some guidelines in place so we had some actual consideration because, the, frankly, the applications were coming in here and we had no real objective me, me, metrics to examine them. So I, I think they're down. This is, the, I would say, this is the first one that I recall seeing in quite some time, Lee. We just saw one last meeting and I think that. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I'm right. sorry, I didn't, I wasn't here last meeting, so. Yeah, those two we haven't and seen we haven't too seen many in, in a while, long, in quite a while. And typically, they're in circumstances such as this uh, <clears throat> location of a church. Budweiser wanted to uh, have Budweiser Way a few years ago, where at the opposite end of the scale, if you will. Uh, and so we don't see a, a, a lot of them. Commissioners, did you make a motion, Lee? I move for adoption. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve item number 12. Would you cast your votes, please? It is approved. Okay. Thank you. Congratulations. 100 years is a long time. Yes, yes. And I just wanted to say, I brought along the chairman of our board and another deacon with me to just kind of be support. And it worked out. Thank you a lot. <laughs> you can carry back a good report. Item 13 is 6929, final plan of Ponderosa Estates 4, located north of 122nd Street, east of County Line Road. Good afternoon, Brad Reed, uh, 300 Point Parkway Boulevard with Craft and Toll, here on behalf of the applicant. Um, we have a final plat that uh, goes along with the zoning and the approved preliminary plat. Um, so, if you guys have any particular questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Um, are you aware that there's been a fairly significant amount of protests? Uh, I was aware there were a few emails that were sent. I have not seen them. And uh, as I understand it, and I don't want to put words in anybody's mouth because you can come down and do that for yourself, but they have to do with uh, concerns that there's been a reduction in the amount of common area and also a reduction of the access to that common area. So if you'd like to address okay. those yeah. two items preemptively, perhaps. So you can, you can see on the, on the screen now, this is the approved preliminary plat. 
um, and then our, our layout now. Uh, really the only change that we made was we took the Far East Street, instead of doing those cul-de-sacs, we made a looped system. Um, I don't really feel like the, the, the reduction in the area of common area was there. We did change a few locations. Um, the east side is actually, it's a drainage way. It's not where the pond is, um, so that there was one common area access there. But we did, and, and probably didn't show it as well as we should have, but we thought about it when we were doing the engineering. There's actually four locations where we have flumes and utilities that uh, will allow the use. Uh, the common area I, right now, is, is probably the best area uh, for common area. There's currently a, um, a hangout area over there with a fire pit and some seating and stuff like that. That's going to stay in place. Can you hold that up so we can oh, see it, please? Okay, as you're talking. Right in this corner. And that will stay, and you can see it's, it's the preliminary plat shows the same thing. Um, the, the land was sitting vacant for, for some time. Um, the developer added some, some stuff over there to be used by the neighbors, but I think this was always the intention. This is the final phase of, of that preliminary plat, and this is the last one that we're, we're going on. Do I understand that there is a sidewalk that goes down the east side? There is a sidewalk. Um, and currently, like I said, it was, it was kind of put in place for while that was vacant to be used. Um, these lots will get into where that sidewalk is. So it will, it will take... Hold it, if I could. Okay. Where is the sidewalk? I just could... It comes... Like so you said the lots are going to get into the sidewalk, but there is a sidewalk. So slow down a little bit. It was uh, Northwest 20, 124th Street right here. It's, there's a, a drainage way that cuts across. Right. There was a sidewalk that was put in, and it actually comes and, and kind of gets into where these lots are. Um, and then it tapers back around and comes up. Uh, it was, a, it was at an added amenity while that was vacant land. So that's a walking trail? Yes. Yeah, a walking trail would be correct. All right. Sidewalk. And then you have sidewalks, obviously, on the streets. Yes. And, and, that, and that was our, our so the, it will take out that ability on that sidewalk. Like I said, it does get into these first five or six lots. Um, but the ability of 124th will actually come across. This Bristol Pine, Pine Boulevard will come up. And then ma our main point is here, between lots 17 and 18, um, there's a, it's a 10-foot wide flume uh, for drainage, but, you know, if it's not raining, that'll act as a, a sidewalk. And that sidewalk in the common area I uh, will stay in place. Okay, before we get too ahead of ourselves here, there's a big difference between a walking trail and a sidewalk. So, Which yeah, is it? It is it's a walking trail. Okay, so it's not paved. No, it, it's, it's a hard surface. Like asphalt or concrete? Um, concrete? It is concrete. Okay, so it is paved. <laughs> yeah, it's not like a city standard sidewalk. Um, okay. My... But you're intending to take it out is what you're telling me. Part of it will come out, yes. Part of it. Which part of it? Uh, the part that comes into, it's these first five lots or so. The, the sidewalk will stay up here in common area I, or the walking trail, sorry. So... I've, I swear, I just got, I thought I had it, now I don't. <laughs> okay, so where does the walking trail begin? Uh, it's 124th Street right there. Right, right there? Yes. And then, it, and then it ceases to exist for about four lots there, is that right? Well, it's there currently. Um, and it'll go away. I don't care what's there currently. You're telling me it's going away. Yeah, so basically off of 124th, we will put the, the city standard sidewalk um, and then the sidewalk in front of the houses. Uh, right. The ability to get back to the area will now be on, on the sidewalks and the roads through the addition. So there is no walking trail on the east side? Correct. And so then where does the walking trail commence again if there is one? It's up in common area I. Um, which is that a, little flume that goes back to com common area I. Yes. And when then you it, say little, is it 10 feet it's wide? It's a 10-foot wide flume. And is it flat-bottomed? Yes. So, same standard flume. Okay. Flat-bottom. It's uh, six inches tall, curbs, uh, but flat. Okay. So uh, it, oh. it is a walkable surface. Yeah, it's a 2% slope, um, which will meet ADA. It's okay. Meets ADA. I like the sound of that. Okay. And is that the only access? I noticed in the preliminary plat there are a number of, of little access points shown. So again, we have um, two more of the same concept. There's, because of the floodplain, we're taking everything off in flumes, but we'll have one between lots 31 and 32, another between 24 and 25. Okay. So it'll access to the, the west. And there's, there's currently no, um, 
walking trail on that side, but that's the, there's a large uh, area, like tension pond, and it's a really nice pond. Um, the east side has a, a drainage way that's not uh, as, as nice of a pond feature. So the, the, the nice part is on the west side. So how do we access, so you come down here midway and then you stumble through the trees up to the pond? Is that how you get there? How do you get to the pond if you're coming from the south? Um, so there is actually, you can see there's a, a kick out area, um, kind of where it right, says Country Club Lane, there's a, the blue line there. There's a spot over there that's, uh, it's a nice area that's outside of the pond that's, again, we're not going to use as, um, for anything. It'll be a part of the common area, but the pond mostly, and you can see it on the, the pictures, the pond is mostly up north. So is there, is there an intention to put a walking trail through that area so that the area can be accessed and utilized? Uh, I think the intention was just for the common area eye to be the, the, the amenity for this part. There is, there, in the addition, there's already a, there's a, a nice clubhouse and a pool, um, but. Okay. Do we need a, it, it sounds like we need a specific plan. Well, I, I just have to say, I, we're having to ask too darn many questions to get the answers to access and where, to, at least in my view, as to, I'm, I still don't really know. Maybe, Scott, if you've got a better idea, you might, I, I mean, Don't I'm point serious. that finger at me. I still I'm not, I, 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 I just don't know. And so I'm, I'm, I'm not inclined to approve this because it's taken me too long to get to the point. Mike, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me see if I figured it out. There is a horseshoe around the top of this that is water, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. You will not be able to access it. People that live off to the east in phases one, two, and three will not be able to access it from the south any longer. What they will be able to, is that a piece of land or some sort of bridge that they can walk out to the north end of phase four and they can get to the water there, is that correct? There is a dam. Uh, yes, you can see the, the open area, it's in phase two. Okay. Um, there's a dam that cuts across. You can see the other blue line right there by the, toward the top, there is a dam that goes okay. across there. So, and is that walkable? Um, I'm not sure the exact width on it. Um, so whether they can get from one side of it to the other, we don't know? I, I do not know that. Maybe somebody else will know. <laughs> Uh, Michael Love, I'm the applicant, uh, 16200 Sonoma Park Drive. Um, from phase two up on the north uh, east side, there is a dam that has the sidewalk across right now. The, sand, the, the sidewalk splits off and goes straight to the fire pit and the picnic area, which is on the top of this um, preliminary plat. And then it veers down to the south to connect to 124th Street, and that's going to go away. That, that'll be lots all the way up to the water down there so the access um, for the fire pit and in that area will be on the top of the plat across that dam okay. so it that that will be replaced may not be exactly the right word by sidewalks that will be along the street uh, absolutely but is there any way to get from that east side to the street other than to go all the way down to 124th I mean, will there be a cut through these lots that you can, after you come across the dam, you can access the sidewalk? No, no, no. The, the sidewalk will, the, the lots go all the way down to the water's edge, so there, there won't be a sidewalk there. Except that on the north lots where there's what you say a fire pit, and see that will all remain. So they'll still be able to come across the dam and enjoy it on the north side, mm -hmm. they just no longer will be able to on the east side because the lots will take right. that out, right? Exactly. Okay. Much like we have on the other side of the water there, you know, okay. those lots go all the way down to the water as well. So. And I guess a question for me then is from the preliminary to the final, because what I've seen the objections, I don't know if anybody's here to speak about it, but I've seen them in writing, is that what they were told previously versus what's happening now. But from the preliminary plat that was approved some time ago, it does show those lots when they were built would be all the way up to the water's edge over here on the right. east side. But on the north, the lots were not going to go to the water's edge, and they're still not in the final plat right. going to go to the water's edge. So it's remained same on the preliminary plat to the final plat with respect to the bordering on the water. Exactly. It's been the same since uh, 2005. And I, and I did put the walking trail in there for a temporary use for them to use while we were doing phase two and, 
and building those lots, but it uh, it wasn't going to stay. So. Okay, but a, a, if it's defined as a common area, that you know, as part of these developments, that would assume the availability of common use, right? So I think in that case, we would want to provide accessibility to it. Well, not. If, if not no. all common area is accessible for use, I mean a lot of drainage ways and that kind of thing are part of common area, in the sense that they have are in common ownership and require common maintenance and yeah. so on. So but the problem but is down there. But accessible or open space common areas. But this are, is more of a recreational area. Are just one kind of common area. Yeah. My point. The the problem is on that side. It's just so tight to the water. There's not there's not much room. So between the, the street and the house and the water, there's, there's not enough room to put anything back there. No, so. And that's on the east side? Or are you talking about the west side? No, okay, well, so on the east side, not enough room. Just like the preliminary plat showed, there would not be room. But on the north side, there will remain common area. It will be accessible. It will be accessible by that dam slash bridge that the neighbors in the other phases will still be able to walk across that and get to the common area on the Correct. north side. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'd kind of like to hear from some neighbors about that at this point. Is it, are we ready to do that, commissioners? Okay. Um, let's start with Natalie Teeter. Hi. Give us your name and address for the record, please. Natalie Teeter, 12404 Stonecrest Lane. I am here as a concerned resident of Ponderosa Estates. We purchased our home in February 2014. We are, con we are part of what's considered Phase 1 of Ponderosa Estates. We purchased our home based on the signage and advertising within our neighborhood as well as online. It advertised common areas around both lakes. We have uh, a large lake and a small lake. Phase four that is submitted here restricts our access to the South Lake on the west side where there is a currently a sidewalk. We had a homeowners association meeting last September of 2016 where we were told by Michael Love this sidewalk would go in and it would remain. It is actually within our meeting notes. There were several, there is probably close to, I, I would guess over 80 people at this meeting. Um, it's officially in our meeting notes. Uh, we have actually had more and more of our common areas taken away with each phase that's been submitted. Um, the North Lake that you guys are talking about, on the east side, we were originally told that we would have access to that piece of the lake as well. That is part of what was taken away in phase three. After phase four, we will have very limited access to the lakes. This neighborhood was a game, a fish and game uh, preserve area where people fished. Um, it was not developed at all when, uh, the, the lakes were not developed at all when we purchased. Um, we were showed by the plotting that we would have access to all of these lakes. And with each phase submitted, it has been taken away. So um, as of now, the way the plans show, we will have very limited access unless you have a boat on the lakes. Can you tell me about the dam, the way it's currently constructed? The road that they're referencing you can cross that goes over the dam. Can you tell me about that? It is. There is a dam. Um, we Several of us refer to it as the spillway as well. It does have a sidewalk that goes across of it. Currently, when we walk across the dam uh, from the main road, we can curve right and go to um, the fire pit area, or we can curve left um, to curve out to the west side of this south lake. That walking area actually connects to a road, so it gives us a loop to walk around. Um, and that's pretty much, it's just a, a regular sidewalk between the two lakes. Thank you. Ms. Teeter is the only request I have to speak. Is there someone else who wants to be heard? Commissioners? I don't know what the 
Ms. Teeter was shown when she purchased her home, um, I would say that based on the staff report, this final plat seems to follow the filed preliminary plat. Um, so I, I don't know, I, I don't have the preliminary, I mean, I, I see the preliminary for this that's as represented by the applicant. Um, so I, I don't know what what was promised uh, to the homeowners with respect to the development. I see that there is some common area access to this lake, either by walking or otherwise, across the dam. So um, I don't know what happened during the sales process, I guess is my point. And there's really not much that we can particularly do right. about that. If I'm at risk of repeating exactly what he's saying is from what we're looking at and commissioners and seeing what had come before the city before, it's consistent with what was there before from what was brought to the city and what was approved and what was publicly available, I assume. I think like you, I don't know what sales materials were used, but this is consistent with the preliminary plat. It does still have access on the north side, fire pit area. Technically, you can, you can access what I'm understanding as the north lake and the south lake because on the spillway, you have access to both sides, but more importantly, as you said, it's consistent with your original plat. So nothing has been changed with respect to what was requested of the city previously versus today. Yeah. I, and I'm one, not sure I agree with that statement. I mean, I as just looking at the two uh, representations before us, it seems to me that there's a fairly significant change, including an increase in density, reconfiguration of the streetscape. Um, uh, you know, it's, well, a, it's, it, a, it's definitely a narrower footprint. I, I, they're not identical by any means. Well, what I was, so with respect to the um, objections related to access to the lake, the, the access to the lake does not look like it's changed from the preliminary to the final. What, what, is the, what is the change in lot count from the preliminary plat to the final plat? And, and I, I understand both commissioners' points on, on it. it it's, I would say it is substantially similar, but what I'm, having not been there for the preliminary plat, I'm at a big disadvantage because I don't know, that's what the neighbors got noticed on. Were they told that those access points would remain at that time when the discussions were ongoing? I mean, those are things that I just don't, I don't have that information. So I'm hesitant to say that they wouldn't have made objections at the preliminary plat stage if they would have been presented with this. Well, and, and access, both access and, and you know, functional usability of, of amenities in common areas is always a part of that discussion. So I'm, I'm sure it was in this case well, as well. One thing that's of great personal frustration to me is that I have to make decisions about these sites in some instances by looking at a plotted dot line of them, I can pull topography up on my phone and see that the sidewalk that is being referred to as a trail is identical to the sidewalks that are in the neighborhood and in fact connected to the network of sidewalks that are in the neighborhood that go to the front of these lots. So I mean I can see that. Um, so that I, I feel like that's a little, it's a little bit deceptive to say that we've got a technical difference between a sidewalk and a trail. One just goes in the front of a lot, the other apparently goes along the lake, but they're identical in terms of the way they were constructed if you look at it here. So. To, answer, to answer the question, uh, it's, it was 63 on the preliminary plat. It is 81 now. Um, and the reason behind, actually behind the change um, in our, our layout was a more standard lot, um, an 80 by 120 instead of the, there's a, a bunch of cul-de-sac lots and the, the home builders. Um, it, it, well, like you want to, it's because you're in the lot business. You want to sell more lots. You, you I, get I a more standard I mean, lot. Yeah, I, we we understand that. But I think my discontent remains that the the changes that are here, because I wasn't present, and I have to trust the neighbors and the builder about what was discussed. And some of that stuff's private and frankly beyond our purview. But as it relates to what was presented to them and what they would have had a chance to contest, there is a difference between these two that may affect how the neighbors feel, and clearly there's some that felt that way based on the packet we got. 
If I could speak on that, the, the, I have the preliminary plat. This is the approved preliminary plat. Um, at no point was there a sidewalk or a walking trail shown. Um, you know, it's, it's a, a zoning use and a, you know, a lot use. Um, this is the approved preliminary plat. Um, like she said, there was a, they, they took away common area in phase three. This is what was in phase three. You can see phase three on the top of, of those. Um, this, every time we come in, this is, they were, it was a planned development and we've just done more or less what this preliminary plat has, has said. I agree we did change the layout. We got rid of the cul-de-sacs, but um, this is what was, what was approved in 2005. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, this, honestly, if you, if you look up Ponderosa Estates online, there's a color rendering that we had done of this. Um, it doesn't show sidewalks. It doesn't show walking trails. Um, and, and if you look on, on the way it is now on, on the preliminary plat, they would still have the same issue. There's no sidewalk shown on there, no walking trail on the east side. You'd come off 124th, you'd go up, you'd have to go around, go to that cul-de-sac, and then come back in. Um, it's, the access isn't, isn't there. The, the walking trail was put in, um, and, and, and it will be taken out on the east side. But I don't think that that was part of the preliminary plat. It's not part of the zoning. Um, the, the amenity of this, of this area actually is, is a, a very nice pool and clubhouse, and that's you know, while the land was sitting vacant, Mr. Love put in some, some uses for that land. And, but like, I, like we've said, that the, the preliminary plat, we've, this has always been the intention, somewhat slightly different, but. Commissioners, where are we? I'll, I'll go back to, and I'm relatively new here too, but what I've understood from preliminary plats, the final plats that this commission looks at is the consistency between the two plats and the objection is not to the lack of cul-de-sacs, it's not to more lots, the objection is to the access to the lakes. And the access to the lakes remains the same as it was in the preliminary plat that previous commissioners approved. And being consistent with that, I'd be in favor of the motion to approve. I have a motion, do I have a second? I have a motion and a second to approve item number 13. Would you cast your votes, please? It is not approved. Um, so the question is, do I have a, a counter motion? I think, I think that would be appropriate because it's, it's Four to four, or three to three. It's going to go the same way on a denial motion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I, I, I would, unless there's objection from the applicant, I'll make a motion to continue the application. I, I think we ought to continue it for. I mean, I guess I'd go to the neighbors too. I mean, how much time to try to work through some of these things and sort it out is reasonable. What did you have? Two weeks meetings, and then meeting we, two weeks. We do. Next meeting would be September the 28th. Uh, we can come back with a, a plan showing exactly what's there and what would be, be taken away. If you guys would have a, in two weeks, that would be fine. I'll make a motion to can continue I, the application. Can I strongly recommend that you continue it longer we, than that? We, we, can, we can continue for a month. I, I think you want to do That'd that. That'd be October 12th. Okay. Is that correct? Okay. I'll make a motion to continue the application October the 12th. Second. I have a motion and a second to continue item number 13 to October the 12th. Cast your votes, please. It is continued. Item 14, C 6925, final plan of Waterwood Estates, common area, <clears throat> located south of 164th and west of North MacArthur. Uh, Brandon Kuhn with Hewitt Zollers representing the applicant. Uh, this is a replat of a common area, um, the only change from this plat, from the previous plat, is a note related to drainage related improvements. Uh, so a, a home builder has come in and bought all the lots, would like to put a neighborhood sign somewhere towards the front, but because of the note that we have on the plat, they're not, a la they're not able to do that. Um, and so in working with planning, they suggested that we uh, replat this to take that note and modify that note um, 
basically to say that no structures can be built that would impede the flow of water um, in that drainage related common area. So the questions I had to myself after reading the staff report were, are we authorizing signage if we do this? Only in accordance with the sign code. And is that the only structure that we're contemplating here? Yes. Is there anybody else here who wants to be heard on this matter today? Commissioners? Second. I have a motion and a second to approve item number 14. Would you cast your votes, please? It is approved. Thank you. Um, excuse me, Brandon. Do you want to reconsider the uh, possibility of continuing your previous case longer than two weeks? And the reason I say that is because our next agenda is going to be horrific. Um, I'll just give you that opportunity. That would, so that would be October 12. Yes. Yeah, that's fine. Let's do that, shall we? Yeah. Can I, I do that motion. out of I turn? A motion, to, yep, yep. motion and a second. What, what was the, what case we'll go back to you? item number 10. Motion to continue to October 12th. Second a motion. I have a motion and a second to continue item number 10 to October the 12th. And it is continued to October 12th. Item 15 is CPA 2017 07. Consider a pros map amendment to the comprehensive plan, changing the land use typology from urban low intensity to urban reserve back to urban low intensity. Located southeast of Britain Road and Mustang Road. Come tell us all about it. All right. Hello. Good afternoon. I will. Uh, my name is Philip Walters, and I'm with the staff of the planning department. Uh, so this is actually our sixth CPA of the year, uh, though it has the number seven on it. And as JJ said, it is up in the northwest. This is in Ward 1, um, southeast of the corner of Britain and Mustang. Right now, uh, vacant for undeveloped land, um, and there is an associated request for R1 that I believe you'll hear right after this uh, on this 80-acre site. Uh, zooming out a little for context, and we're out here pretty close to the, the Yukon area, a uh, couple miles, mile and a half off of uh, either Northwest Expressway or the, the Turnpike. Uh, zooming back in, this area is designated currently as a ULI and urban reserve uh, and is next to the employment reserve as well as some regular ULI. Um, for our newer commissioners, the employment reserve is anticipating much larger uh, employment uses at some point uh, in the future. To look at the actual land uses in the area, it's rather undeveloped around. Uh, on the south, there is a, a bit of a a ranch type operation with some uh, pins that's a little just a little off this map uh, that is down there on each side uh, right and left there are special permits allowing a little bit of uh, dirt and or gravel mining or removal um, those have been there for quite some time you can kind of see some evidence of that particularly on the west side and of course to the north we have uh, lots of residential development um, what's really worth noting about this site um, is that it it is in the same sewer shed as that development to the north of it uh, but as of the time of, of the plan's original drawing of lines for the land use topology areas, uh, this site was part of a much larger parcel of 160 acres, the same as this site plus the same amount to the south. And that parcel was situated such that it couldn't really have, have justified the case for being regular uh, urban low. Uh, however, this site, this 80 acres that you're looking at today, is adjacent to and has good access to the public water and wastewater. Uh, we have confirmed that with the utilities department. And it is at right on, on that edge for fire service between a, a tr a, the predicted urban and rural uh, times. That is shown here. Station 32 is approximately two miles to the north. Um, and it's also worth noting that although we are just outside of that urban response time that would be most fitting for ULI, uh, the model that makes these predicted uh, response times is calibrated to the responses we've actually seen citywide. This is a unique instance because of the way Mustang Road jogs a little bit. 
between the fire station and here. The model is very uh, respective of that and possibly a little bit conservative with how far that green line has come down uh, in this case. But in any case, this is how it stands now. And so again, that original designation, looking at the whole parcel that we had to work with at the time, uh, we decided that we did not want to draw land use topology lines across across ownership. We respected ownership lines. And so uh, that original parcel was in a shed that had potential for sewer service, but did not have it truly serviceable for that whole site at that time. But the site that you see today does have that. Um, the feasibility of services. Based on the, the water and sewer, this was left out of, of urban development considerations previously, but we think it's more likely now. And staff's recommending approval. Staff is recommending approval because of the site that, that you're presented with today. Commissioners, with questions, comments, concerns? A motion. I'll make a motion to approve the application. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve item number 16? 16? 15. 15, sorry. Could you cast your votes, please? It is approved. Item 16 is the associated rezoning application PC 10 506. Three zone 11300 West Britain Road from the AA district to R1 single family. Good afternoon, Mark Grubbs, 1819 South Morgan Road on behalf of the applicant. Um, we are asking for uh, accompanying R1 um, site to the north is R1 um, and, and completely, almost completely developed out. Utilities are there, um, water and sewer are there to the northwest. Um, wasn't too long ago. I think there's 320 acres that went uh, R1 in that area. So um, my client does own the remainder of the 160 and understands that utilities doesn't have sewer access. So that's why we're just requesting the 80. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Does he own SP259 also, Mark? No. Um, I have a few questions. I'm not quite sure who I'm wanting to pose them to. Um, our staff report notes that um, this is in an area that has a highly vulnerable aquifer. Um, it recommends preserving natural open spaces and utilizing low impact development techniques. And my question is, how is that reflected in this particular rezoning application? Um, and also, there is a comment that plan conformance can be strengthened at the platting stage by addressing tree and natural feature preservation, street network, and pedestrian activity. And I'm curious about whether that's really accurate and or feasible. Can I piggyback on this too? I've, one of the questions I've had on a lot of this is, you know, at what point we see the actual plats or the specific plans. And if this is just a, a, a strict rezoning case, we get a lot of this, a lot of this staff um, kind of input or report that doesn't seem applicable until we see those. And so the question is either, I guess, I feel like we need to either ask for specific plans or plats earlier, or we wait to have this review of the material for when we actually see those. The staff report reflects that the site has two large ponds, stands of large trees, and rolling hills. Uh, and preserved natural features cannot be defined with base zoning district rezoning request. So on a straight R1 rezoning, uh, how, how are we to accomplish those things? Well, okay, just so I'm clear, this particular tract is part of 15, PUD 1515? Am I looking at the right one or am I off the case? Oh, okay, all right, never mind. I'm at the next, next case. Sorry, Mark. Okay. 
That's okay. Did you want to speak to my uh, question? In this case, um, there is a preliminary plat already filed. It, it will come before you on October 12th. Um, and I can show you a preview of it. I mean, if it would help that maintains those two ponds. Um, so we have already taken those into consideration. Um, but so you're it, telling me that the, the comment by staff is accurate, that plan conformance can be addressed at the platting stage well, and it, will be addressed? It will be because when the preliminary plat comes in, uh, which is going to be relatively recent, it's already been filed and you'll see it on October 12th. So it'll be recent on your uh, on your mind. Um, I can show you that this preliminary plat does maintain the two large ponds, um, and these are a larger lot. They're 75 to 80 foot, 85 foot lot widths by 135. So they're bigger. What you're going to see north and northwest, um, we have uh, preserved those ponds, but. I mean, I know that's not before you today, but it has already been submitted. What about trees, Mark? Uh, there's not any trees really to speak of. On I'm pretty side. sure it says, doesn't it say? On the picture, though, it, there are not any. There are not very few, but I, I saw that. Trees at, Is no. that standard just boilerplate? I think so. Two large ponds, stands of large trees, I'd, and rolling I'd, hills. I don't recollect any trees no, on the okay. side. There's, right. just a, there's a handful. Well, I mean, if you look at this drawing, Wait, 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 wait. No, that's to, a different one. To, to be fair, when we when we rezone, we're looking at use and density. Yeah. When we just updated the plan right. to reflect and allow for the for this type of density, correct? Yeah. And and the plat stage is really designed to review a prospective development within the zoning district, whether it's a base district or where they're bringing a PUD forward, right? I mean, that's a difference between a PUD and an SPUD and a base zoning district case. And that's exactly the point of my question, whether mm -hmm. this property would be better um, rezoned through a, an SPUD or a PUD process rather than uh, a straight rezoning. So that's, that's the point of my question. Okay. I, when you see these kind of comments in a straight zoning application, it, it establishes a record and puts the applicant, too, on notice that these items are going to come up when we do get to see the, the plat. Okay. And you'll see the same plan conformance comments on the on the plat. Okay. Is there anybody else here today who wants to be heard on this matter? Commissioners? Mr. Hensley? I'll move approval. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve item number 16. Would you cast your votes, please? <coughs> It Thank is you. Item 17 is PDSP 1515F, a specific plan located at 1320 West Memorial Road. Good afternoon. Tim Johnson with Johnson Associates here on behalf of the applicant. Uh, this item was continued a couple weeks ago as a result of the discussion of the drive that exists to going out to Memorial Road. Um, there was some research done by Public Works Department, and it was determined that the drive had been properly permitted and constructed. Um, and it is the intent of the applicant to uh, leave it in place. What's before you today is a specific plan, not a subdivision of property. Uh, the specific plan, um, which you've seen in, in the staff report and staff information, is for the Uncle Julio's restaurant. Um, and according to the staff, we meet all the criteria of the PUD, 1515. Uh, and we would request your approval. So two weeks well spent? By somebody. <laughs> Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to be heard on this matter? Commissioners? I'll make a motion to approve the application. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve item number 17. Would you cast your votes, please? Thank you. And item 18 is SPUD 995, application to rezone 21300 20, Southeast 104th Street. The applicant with us. Hello. 
Uh, my name is Todd Bug. Um, this is my wife, Melissa, and we're here on the 21300 rezoning. Um, were you on this? We've, we've gone through the staff report and made some modifications to this bud itself. Um, some of the questions that the neighbors had were the uh, specific use, and so we added some verbiage there to just explain that a little better. Uh, we added uh, weddings, baby showers, bridal showers, bridal shows, reunions, company parties, educational school, field trips, and other family gatherings. And then um, we also made changes to number six on page two, just to state that under the landscaping that we would, we will be planting additional trees in the future. Uh, my recollection is that um, when we continued this matter, it was with the strong recommendation that you meet with your neighbors. Were you able to do that? Yes and no. Uh, we met with some of the neighbors, and we have letters here, if I could pass them around to you. Um, we met with a neighbor at 21440, Michelle Unruh. We met with neighbor 21300, Maria Long. Uh, we've tried to reach out to Todd Lindsay at 21215. Uh, and that's my yes explanation. My no explanation is, uh, please forgive me, we've had several of the neighbors that are just, you know, like the last meeting, we had a man stand up here and use profanities, and I just don't want to engage that kind of atmosphere. It's kind of, some of them are not happy with what we're trying to accomplish. But we're truly trying to work everything out with everybody. Uh, can I pass these around to you guys? Sure. Um, also, while you're looking at that, uh, if you don't mind, I wanted to, um, can we please pull up exhibit? Uh, um, oh. Sorry to interrupt you. The, these letters, there's not multiple copies, so we're going to have to pass them around. Yes, sir. I'll pause. Um, qu quickly, can you tell me, are these, the addresses here, are these people that are directly north of you? Um, the, let's see here. Michelle, the first letter, she's 21440. She is a um, not a legal pro protester. She's a non-legal protester, from what I understand, because she's not in the 300 foot radius of the four neighbors that are the legal protesters. But, but she's, she's my point is, she lives within the addition yes. immediately. This isn't 103rd no. mile down the road. No, okay. she's straight she's down at the, at the end, end of the street. Okay. Oh, man, that's the first one. The next one may not be neighbors. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. So there's just some reference letter, letters from local businesses. Um, that would, you know, they just gave us letters that would love to see a event center like this. Um, can I address something on uh, the uh, exhibit C um, where we left off about the tree buffer? If you don't mind, it was kind of misunderstood that the last time Melissa was here, everybody thought there was 40 feet. If we could pull that up on the screen, and we can also show you um, from where the, she doesn't have it.
solitaries. Okay? So it was just a big misunderstanding at the first meeting. Someone had said that there's 40 foot trees. I think they scaled it off. And, uh, but anyway, this is this map here is actually from the city. Uh, we also, we did, um, well, we looked at the, it's called ADT, um, Average Daily Traffic at 104th and Harrow Road. There, in 2016, there was 5,800 cars a day that crossed that intersection. 2017, there's 3,600 cars, so it's 2,200 cars less per day that crossed that intersection. So, you know. Uh, there's also at the interstate down there, there's 41,500 cars a day that cross through I-40 and Heronewala. Um, there's also the ODOT. We looked up, we had another question by a council member. There's over $100 million that's going to be spent going east down I-40. Um, the Choctaw and Harrow Road intersections will all be, you know, redone. And then there's one point. $5 million worth of overlays on the streets, resurfacing. It's going to go from I-40 to 149, which is on down past, you know, us by three miles. Thanks, JJ. Um, we, we tried to get all the information gathered that we could for you guys uh, to explain it to the best of our ability. Um, also, back to the, you know, the protesters are really concerned about the noise and we tried our very best um, like Melissa said we're not going to have you know uh, subwoofer you know stuff we're not going to have outdoor loud noxious music I mean it's in our spud we're not going to do it um, so anything that's going to be out is why we put the sound pavilion is because that's where the sound will be generated at the pavilion when the bride gets married so the preacher will be literally talking and that sound we have to go up and over our building and through, you know, five to seven hundred trees. And we're just hoping, you know, and praying that you guys will help us approve this so that we can, uh, you know, chase our dreams. And we've tried to listen to all the protesters. Uh, one of the protesters did not want us to ride our racing four-wheelers up and down the street. And I told him, I said, yes, sir, we will not do that no more. So we quit. I told the boys to put them up, and we won't ride them down 104th Street when people come you know, home and eating at times, and they don't want to listen to that. I agree. I don't want to listen to it either. So we shut that down. Um, we haven't played. You know, one of the things we love to do is at our other pavilion, which is another 600 feet across, um, we love, after Melissa goes to church, we like to get our family together on Sunday. We love to play volleyball. Sometimes we get a little loud, but the little bitty radio that I bought to play out there is, you know, a $30 radio from Walmart. and sound does travel down the valley. And several of the protesters have brought that up, and I agree, the sound does travel down the valley. That's why we're not going to let bands and stuff like that, we're just not going to have that. we we'll put it in the spud. You know, if we're loud, they can call the police. Please come out and give us the citation. But uh, we're going to do our very best, man, to, you know, not have any kind of loud music outside. The first time we spoke about this matter, I indicated that in order for there to be sort of, you know, via, uh, um, verifiable um, criteria in the SPD document itself, yes, um, with respect to the preservation of trees, for yes. instance, uh -huh. I recommended that you try to commit to a percentage of the existing, and I'm talking about existing today, yes, ma'am, uh, trees in place that can be preserved. Mm -hmm. And I do not see that included on your list of. of it is. Uh, show me where. Ninety percent. It's on page three, um, under item seven. And uh, also on that, we actually use one of the utility easements there, where the OEC um, line crosses. You can see it right on that map. It's right, you see the 104th Street Road, the next south, there's a tree line. That's actually the 104th Street easement. And just south of that is a fiber optic telephone easement and the OEC easement for an overhead telephone line. 
and we actually are trying to use that to where we can have our parking and so to keep from clearing any kind of other trees. You know, if we have to do anything right there, we may have to pull the chainsaws out and top up some trees, but literally we believe that there's 90% of the trees out here will stay. And our goal is to save more than that, but until we can move forward, you know, the, the goal is to save as many trees as possible. It may be more than 90%, but we've committed to saving 90%. And if we have to take something out, we'll plant something. And we can, uh, we have GPS capability on all of our stuff, so I can hire our certified, you know, surveyor, he's licensed, bonded, and we can go out and shoot what trees we have to. Um, and Jonathan Staley, everybody knows him, he's very good. Before we take out a tree, we can shoot it, we can put it on a plan, you know, get it approved, whatever we need to do if, if we have to. I know this is a, you know, very sensitive area. Other specific things that we talked about were reducing the height of the signage from eight feet down to, I think it was five um, or six. We took out the um, electronic message display, but we're open to changing. I just had attached a copy of what the sign would look like. It's just going to be a, a big stone with the name etched in it in a natural setting. Four by six, basically, stone. So can we take can we take the height down to say five or six oh, feet? Yes, yes ma'am. Yeah, absolutely. To yes, ma'am. And what was the other thing? We're, any any impermeable paving would have to meet our current guidelines. Yes, ma'am. Um, no EMD signage. So those were the things that we discussed. Yeah. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that those things were included in the application that we're actually looking at today. So. Yes. Um, I assume that all of you people have sat here for a reason, and that that reason is because you want to be heard on this matter today. Um, uh, be Mr. Before, just, just one quick question. If you go back to the other slide uh, that you showed um, earlier, the closest pro protester is 300. I'll go back. Yeah, that the one you had. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, right there. Go go down. They were go showing the protest bit. area. Go up to that one you was not, just on right not, here. So three. Not that one, but no. but the other one. Okay. Okay. That one there. Yes, sir. Go back one more. I yeah. Well, it might it might yes. have been it's that, that, that one. one. It's the one you were. I, I think. What, it's what the is the exact? What is the exact footage? Exact footage. Pro, uh, legal protester number one. The exact footage is. From where the sound provision will be would be 575.61 feet, sir. And then pro legal protester number two will be 632.14 feet. Number three will be 703.24 feet. Legal protester number four's house will be 753.05 okay. feet. Anyone else? We want to hear from our citizens. Okay. And yep. one thing, can I say one thing? Sure, uh, of course. Sorry. Um, the elevation of our pad, established by the city of Oklahoma City to keep us out of the flood zone, is 1144.30. The sound pavilion will be 10 foot lower. You know, it's just a little pavilion down by the water's level. So, literally, I mean, it's, you know, it's low. And, and we got our building, it's going to be 38 foot tall with a uh, 612 pitch. So that, and the sound, they're going to, you know, it's going to be headed south. So to get it to go up and over and through 700 foot of trees is, you know, I know it still might get there, but we're not going to have bands and stuff. So that's the biggest concern that I've, I've been told from the president. So directionally speaking, the uh, noise would be pointed towards the lake? Yes, sir. Okay. Other than the preacher, I'm sure the preacher will be standing, you know, the, facing this way. Does it say this? You know, so we'll try it our best to. I just want to be. Okay. Before we, just want to be clear on one thing. So. You're not going to have bands. No, sir, we will not. No live music? Outside. There will be no live music outside. What does that mean? You said it, you're having I a have pavilion. Is that an enclosed structure? There will be a building. You, okay. Do you want to hear um, so what is we wrote into the spot? Four walls? Yes. Just so I'm clear. So there's no outdoor live music? That's correct, sir. At all? 
No, sir. I mean, that's correct. There's no, we don't have any bands outside. Because when you say pavilion, I think of like a three-sided structure versus oh, it's just a four-sided enclosed building. The, the building itself for the, for the receptions will have live music. They can have live music right. if they would like to. The outside is just in the spud we've written that it would be light processional or light string music only. Oh, you mean like, okay. Like background here come, noise. Here come the bride music or yeah. yes. Okay. And your hours of operation are what? Our hours of operation have been written into the spud and they are ten AM to ten PM on um, Sunday through Thursday. And then Friday and Saturday. I'm sorry, ten AM to ten PM on Sunday, nine AM to ten PM on Monday through Thursday, and nine AM to twelve PM on Friday and Saturday. So all live music will be in the doors. Indoors. 12 a.m. 12 a.m. Yes. Yeah, 12 a.m. Yeah, until midnight on midnight. Friday and Saturday. Right? Friday and Saturday yeah. only. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Okay. okay. Um, I have here three people who have signed up. I don't know whether you have any preference about the order in which you go. If you do, you can decide that amongst yourselves. Sure, come on. Give us your name and address for the record, please. Yeah, come, come to the microphone. Julie Carnes, 21230, Southeast 103rd. My heart's pounding this time, not because I'm nervous, but because I'm mad. Because I want to see the last slide we used last time that shows the width of the road and our properties behind. They're telling us that what is the, from there to the feet they're showing it from there to our back doors not to the edge of our property that's so right that's it that's the, what it shows okay so also I have a quote from a sound and acoustic engineer out of Tulsa he says that um, event centers are known to be troublemakers when it comes to noise my husband and I bought our home back in 2008 for the peace and quiet. We have a beautiful backyard, and they're saying that we can't hear them even when he has a little Walmart radio. You can hear the Walmart radio. That's how tra it travels through there. Um, also, according to John Shadley, the Tulsa engineer, he said um, event centers should be no closer, no closer than a half a mile from a residential area. And that's for assuming that all activities are held indoors and much further than that if they're held outdoors. Um, also, since the last time we talked, there has been no compromise made that we know, that we heard of. And also another consideration is the light pollution. We uh, watched the meteor showers back in August and it didn't even dawn on me the last meeting if there's signage and there, there are going to be bright lights, that's going to affect us being able to enjoy the stars and looking outside at night. Also, that is a dirt road right now that is, uh, has a locked gate on it. We have no traffic back through there now. And if they're going to open that up to events, our back properties are not fenced. So who's to say people are 299 people capacity are going to be going up and down that road and having access to my back, the back of my property, unsupervised, maybe drunk, lost their way, et cetera. Um, that's just not. And 299 people, I was thinking, that's kind of a nice way of saying 300, is it not? That's like a sale at Walmart for 9.99. You know, they might as well just say it's it's ten dollars. I don't even think there's 299 people that live in our entire ditch and out there. Uh, I also spoke with a real estate agent from Keller Williams. She said, we as residents will have nothing to gain by this. We will only lose in our property value because no one's going to want to buy a home that's backed up to an event center that can accommodate 300 people with noise. And I think that's all on my list. <laughs> I, my final thought to you guys before you cast your vote, is this something, our dream home is built, we plant, we're in our late 50s, 
We plan on staying there. We're going out feet first is what we've decided uh, long before this. And is this something that you would want in your backyard? Thank you for your time. Thank you. I have uh, sheets also for Carol Strange and uh, Kurt Strange. Give us your name and address for the record, please. Carol Strange, 21216 Southeast 103rd, Duval, Oklahoma. Uh, I live in the second house, and I'm not a very good speaker, so I'm going to be reading most of this. So bear with me. <laughs> I live in the Take second. Take a deep breath. <laughs> yeah. I live in the second house on 103rd, right behind my backyard. They're wanting to put a w wedding venue and event center. I'm here to express my concerns of allowing such a project near our homes, which is zoned residential. This would cause a great deal of hardship upon family and our neighbors, such as noise, heavy traffic, and most of all, individuals that just don't belong in our area that we call home. Also, this would make our property not appealing to sell to others because no one wants to live that close to a nuisance, which will be noise. We all love to sit in our backyards, enjoy the scenery and the quietness. This would end if they are allowed to uh, build the venue event center. This would be an elaborate venue and with all due respect, as big as this is going to be and as nice as it is, Wedding showers is not going to pay for it. Most of the people work different hours in our neighborhood. The hours that the vineyard would bring would make getting sleep unbearable, much less enjoying our home life. We chose to move out of the hustle and bustle of the crazy city life, so I asked the committee, please do not bring this to our backyard. And also, at the end of our uh, last meeting, you asked uh, for the Barneses and the neighbors to get together. Well, me and my husband went up and gave our email address to her and Angie Kaufman, which lives in the first house, went up too. We have heard nothing. So I asked the committee to please not to uh, approve this. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Strange, did you want to speak? Give us your name and address for the record, uh, please. My name is uh, Kurt Strange. I live at uh, 21216 Southeast New Walla. I'm sorry, I mispronounced your name. Oh, uh, well, I it happens all the time. I'm used to it. Um, I live uh, directly behind where they're proposing to put this venue. I'm from my biggest thing I'm afraid of is the noise and disruptive activity. I hear there's no bands. They're going to keep them inside. What guarantee do we have that they're going to soundproof that building adequately so we don't hear it? I can step out on the patio and I can hear this 30 watt radio playing. It's not annoying, but it's there. It's just normal noise. But what I'm concerned with is that the music is going to be loud and the late hours, especially with the caterers, in and out. They're going to be there two hours before and at least two hours to clean up. So it's going to put them out to the wee hours of the early morning. When we moved out there, I just wanted peace and quiet. You know, now this is all going to go away. You know, the I have a problem here because I work a lot of long hours. You know, if I don't get enough sleep and I drive across the state, I work at major hospitals and facilities, chemical plants, if I don't get enough sleep and I run off the road and kill myself or kill somebody else because I can't get enough damn sleep at night, then this is going to be a problem. Um, I don't like to stay out of town. I want to come home every night. Uh, I'm just concerned about this going in. I know they're going to put in a big facility. They're going to try to do what they can. But with this size facility going in, they're going to have big financial responsibility. 
Therefore, this is going to cost, they're going to be expecting big revenue in return. So, and then I'm also worried about people wandering around, which it happens. It's just the way it is. Be wandering around, and there's always a percentage of people smoking, and we know what happens when people smoke. There's cigarettes, they get gone. Next thing you know, we got a wildfire, and now I got to worry about it. <clears throat> Possibly losing my house. Um, um, that's pretty much it. I mean, you know, uh, if if they're so interested in building the event center, they've got a lot of land, and it looks like to me they could put it on the south side of that pond down there because there's an area, and they got the equipment to fill the pond in and move it. You know, so uh, I've also worked event centers, and I know what happens there. They get overloaded with people beyond what the normal capacity is because I've been there, and I load them equipment up so we can cool the buildings in advance. We stay there, and we babysit it to handle the overloaded situations. So I just want you to take that into consideration. The other thing is I don't want to... I don't want to move, but nor am I going to listen to the music. So, you know, this is going to put me in another possible financial situation where I got to move because I'm not going to listen to the noise. Thank That's you. That's all I got to say. Commissioners, um, you know, I think we we have seen, and I'm guessing we're going to see um, uh, more of these applications. Uh, it seems to me that, it, for me, I guess, I'll put it that way, the question really comes down to, uh, you know, the land use, whether uh, this kind of setting, which seems to be exactly what people who build and operate these centers want, this rural setting, um, uh, is, is an appropriate place to drop a business, um, and, and that's really the issue, you know, the, whether the infrastructure is there to support it, whether it's an appropriate um, uh, match to the surrounding residential uses, um, whether there are things that can be done to ameliorate the impacts, and whether those things are sufficient to, to mitigate. So, um, questions, comments, concerns? I, uh, I think the biggest mistake that was made here was, was doing the pond and preparing the land before getting approval to do it. And I agree with um, the, uh, some of the neighbors that you know a different layout of this same facility might have eliminated any of these issues from the get. Um, but without the, without the uh, spirit of collaboration, I guess, with the neighbors, I feel like, you know, you've missed an opportunity to make this easier uh, to get this done. Go ahead. Yeah. Just real briefly, uh, back when I, just a little, just real quick, I know everybody's kind of tired. Back when I bought this property, um, it was in a flood zone where the pond is, and there had been a fire through there, several little tornadoes, all the trees were dead. You couldn't even walk through there. And I mean, I've worked my tail end off for about just under 11 years. I've got my uh, SWPP plan from the Oklahoma City. I got my 404 permit from the Corps of Engineers. And we built this pond because it's our dream. I love to fish and hunt and fish and fish. We have a letter from the, uh, you know, the Aquatic Center there. It's a National Wildlife um, letter. And, you know, the city of Oklahoma City has programs to where, like in the Parks and Recreation, there's over 300 schools in the city of Oklahoma City, is what the man put in his letter that y'all have read, where kids want to come fishing. And they look for places like this. And, you know, I am all about, I built this myself. I didn't ask for funding from the United States Wildlife, you know, and fish and game people. I built this on my own sweat and hard work. I didn't ask for no, nobody stocking my fish in there. But if I can affect school kids for the next 30 years and get them off the phones and off the couches and off drugs and come out and teach them how to fish and work with the parks and recreation people, that's why I built this lake. For my family to enjoy 
and for people and organizations just like the man that wrote that letter right there to and enjoy. Today I talked to a gentleman with the Oklahoma City Parks and Recreation. He's a biologist. He's been a biologist his whole life. He's going to come out here next week or two. He's so excited to come out and train people and, and have kids, and there's no facility anywhere around here within Oklahoma City limits that we can bring people like this. So this isn't all about just the money of a, a giant facility to have weddings. This is about, you know, teaching our youth how to enjoy the outdoors. And there may be weddings here, but there's also going to be school buses show up, you know, with 15 or 20 kids having a field trip. And to me, that is very important. I poured my heart and soul into this, and I've went through every permit. Like I said, the SWP, uh, Mr. Bill Whitaker is a great inspector for the city of Oklahoma City. After ra every rain event for years, he'd come out, we'd inspect it, we put our saw down, we put our silt fence down, we put the drainage stuff where it's supposed to go. Um, I am the one that put the gates up so our neighbors could have a safe backyard. I put seven sets of gates up. JJ told me I need a, a revocable permit. We've actually got that permit and we're going through the process to get it approved. That's a whole other deal. They all have to prove that also. And you heard here today, it's safe having those gates up. Because when Mr. Brown was here, um, you know, we'd go over there and clear snow out so he could get, he was an elderly gentleman, you know, 75, 80 years old. He had to be able to go get groceries. I've maintained that road for my mom and dad have lived out here for 31 years. And I know these people have all chased dreams and build their homes. We want to work with all of them. I want to find solutions with them. That's why we're not going to have concerts. We want to have it as quiet as possible. But I just want you to know, I've killed myself to build this for my family. It's beautiful. We love it. And the worst thing anybody can say about me is that I've worked too hard. I'm a hard worker. I'm, they've told me I'm a bad neighbor. It's offended me. Um, you know, it's, it's just I poured a lot into this. And I, I do not want this to descend into accusations on either side or both sides. I think that is not what's in front of us. Um, you know, I think it is perfectly possible to attribute the best intentions to all parties and still make a decision here, and that's what we're going to do. So. The operational concerns that were highlighted with respect of the application in the staff report seem to me to be the ones that are the primary concern both of the neighbors uh, as well as staff and, and probably us in the evaluation uh, of this application. As I look at the map, uh, this area is down here at Southwest 104th looks like and I, I mean it's, 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 it's what, what we used to be a long way away, but is not necessarily so uh, anymore. It's designated as open space and agricultural preserve uh, in our land use typology. But be that as it may, it is hard close to uh, some existing uh, residential. And so it seems to me our evaluation comes down to I, I, I simply whether these operational uh, and other development related policies are set out in page nine um, are those that we focus our concern on. That seems to be, because actually if, uh, I mean, look, it's a nice looking piece of ground and uh, regardless of what the neighbors feel about each other, as I look at it, it's, it, it looks like a wonderful setting to me. Operationally, though, is it going to generate noise? Is it going to generate additional traffic? I don't frankly think the road is suitable for additional traffic that's coming in and out of there for 200 uh, plus cars, 299, whatever. Uh, for 200 plus cars, I do have a concern about that because that's a significant rain, uh, other events. So I, I guess. I'm, I'm somewhat torn because I, 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 like, I do like the use. We are going to see more of these applications. It seems to me that this is everybody wants to open up one of these centers. Um, and it seems the only concern that I've, I've, I've heard is there's the traffic concern. I don't want to minimize that. But primarily it's a noise concern. 
and a light spillover concern. I'm very familiar with both of those considerations. So, um, and I don't know that we're going to get agreement between that side of the room and this side of the room. It's, uh, it's like the bride's side and the groom's side um, in this particular case. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, so I don't know that we're going to get agreement. So we're just going to have to make a decision as to whether or not we can. It, we want any more additional mitigation measures. I've not heard anything about lighting. There are mitigation measures we can inst uh, request for lighting, such as what we've done with the car dealer guys and the um, drive-in restaurants. That's a consideration. But I mean, uh, it's, it's just kind of a might as well vote. Unless anybody's got, a, I mean, got a lot of more comments. With respect to lighting, I would think that when the facility is not in use, there's unlike car dealerships, yeah. there's no reason for it to be lit up. No, I agree with that. But even when it is in use, there's the lights that provide the uh, on cue uses them. Some of our larger facilities use those that direct the lighting straight down. Versus, we don't want any of the what the city has put in citywide, the street lights, we don't want those out there. So obviously I think that's a consideration. It's, and they should be out when it's not in use. I, I spoke to the to the applicants. I didn't speak to neighbors directly and they invited me to come out and, and look at the site, which I did not. I mean this may be an oversimplification, but to me these discussions come down to use and density. It, it's that it's that clean for me. Um, I go back to the case we had today with the plat. And there's a preliminary plat and a final plat. And if there's things that aren't presented in one and presented in another, people rely on that to make decisions. And I think one of the things that we do as planning commissioners, I wasn't a part of this, but I understand how it has worked, is put together a comprehensive plan. That tells the public, it tells the city where infrastructure demands are going to come from, what neighbors can expect and what the surrounding uses are going to look like. That's one of the big points of that plan. From a zoning standpoint, if you look at this use unit, which is what your property is going to fall into, which I can't remember, it's not appropriate, I mean, description, but it's like spectator events or something. It is by as a permitted use in C class, C based district zoning applications and in industrial zoning up. You know, and, and, and there's a reason for that because it makes sense and you expect that type of density and the infrastructure is in place for it. And I told you guys when we spoke, that's my big concern is you've got roads and things like that that are not designed for that. You've got areas people have taken the representations of the type of development that's going to go on out here um, and this doesn't fit that. Um, it, it, and it, sh it shows that in the ordinance. And I, I really appreciate what you've said and I know how passionate you are. I can't support the application on those grounds um, and it's just that simple for me. It's not, I really respect what you've done, but I can't support the application because the use and density aren't appropriate. So I, that's a motion. I'll make a, a motion unless there's other discussion. I'll move to deny the application. I mean, I, we owe a vote. So, there's only six of us. I have a motion and a second to deny item number 18. Would you cast your votes, please? And it's denied. Thank you. That concludes our items for discussion. Let's see if I can find mine. We'll give these folks a minute to clear the hall. I would just like to say thank you so, so much. We, this has been so heavy on our minds and hearts for, since this all started. We appreciate you all taking the time to come down. Thank you for keeping process. our, our peace and quiet in the neighborhoods that we purchased our biggest investment. And thank you so much. Thank you. Planning Commission committees, we don't have those. Planning Commission members. What are those? Uh, we'll talk about that later. All right. um, I, I, before, before we adjourn, I, I do want to say that we are um, 
missing our Ward 4 Commissioner, and that's apparently a done deal. So um, we'll have to think about what, if anything, we want to do to commemorate his service. And, oh, yeah. And um, he, has, he has served long and hard and well. We should give the, him the ceremonial gold watch <laughs> that we give to all other I may, I may leave that to you just to head up that. That's a committee, you see, <laughs> Retirement of Commissioners Committee. Um, planning Department? I do, wait, before we oh, go. I'm sorry. I do have, um, I, I'm not one on these alcohol cases to get particularly stressed about these things, again, as Janice and others, others know. Um, I don't know where we end up on, on these sorts of uses that are somewhat challenging for us because, and it's, it, it's just, it's, it's not this use that I keep coming back to. If, if, if it's 236,000 square feet of ABC, and it, admittedly it's light ABC, but in this fitness center context, it looks real good, but it, then it's there for, forever. It's just so challenging for us to deal with. I don't know, I, I'd probably vote to approve this particular application, but it's, it's going to be there I, you know, I forever. Think part of the process is, uh, or part of the concern is that we're sort of in the middle of a change in state law, and we're not quite sure where that's going to shake out in the end. Mm -hmm. We're in the process of trying to change the way we deal with it through special permitting as opposed to a zoning process and we're not quite there yet and part of that's because of the state law changes and so you know we're we're still in this kind of um, gray area and we're, we're having to just kind of deal with it as best we can and we'll just have to you know soldier on with that I think we can certainly come up with a better uh, plan than 236,000 square feet I'm guessing anybody else well, I, I just think about, you know, once we approve that, that's going to be there. And, uh, you know, after fitness is gone, you know, this is going to be a big old saloon. I mean, a huge one. And I don't think any of us really want that. Well, and that is a part of the concern. I mean, theoretically, in an ABC2, it's tied to the food sales. But, you know, clearly there are not too many 326,000 square foot restaurants in Oklahoma City. So... Once you once you breach the 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 walls, you know, and Endless cheesecake factory. beyond the patio, <laughs> beyond the patio area, I think it just gets a little more problematic. So. The real great thing, though, I mean, something like it's right near that that main event. I mean, it's used bowling alleys. I mean, is it not some tens of thousands of square feet? Is there not some precedent for this similar? Uh, I I don't believe that they have like the it's about the whole the, run of the place. Yeah, the free. We should be sure. We should be sure. I'd hate to deny it just based on size. If there are other places, I mean, um, there may be that's some. A, other that's a fair comment. Places. I mean, I, um, Commissioner Hensley sort of mumbled this under his breath during the deal, but it's the golf course problem. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I didn't really think about that until he said it. And I thought that's a very good point. I mean, yeah. it's acres and acres where you just, you know, hit a golf ball and, and the take city it owns wherever it. you want. And they, they come out and bring the beer to you. So, I mean, it's kind of the same concept. It's, uh, uh, you know. We, we have looked at softball fields. <laughs> We've looked at, um, you know, different, different uses that are recreational uses. And, and even those, if you go in and actually carve out the field, you're reducing it from 236,000 down to a mere, you know, 10 or 12,000. <laughs> which is at least a little less, you know. I think the real argument for it is it forces somebody to come back in the future and have a discussion again for something of that magnitude about the use and what they're trying to do. And as that area, the development patterns and things change over time, you don't know. So it, I, I agree. It's a, Rusty's point is well taken, but it, it, there's a, there is an issue, I think, with that scale of something. So I'm, I'm, I'm with you. We'll see where we get in a month. Um, development Services Department, no, JJ doesn't have anything to say. Municipal Counselor's Office, no. Okay, so, no citizens to be heard, I can see. No other business. Lance, you got anything to add? <laughs> you good. So, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Don't move. Second. I have a motion and a second to adjourn. Cast your votes. We're out of here.